This morning I made one of the biggest decisions for my card selling business I've ever made in my entire life. Uh, it was the result of what I thought at the time was a good idea, but over the years at this point, it kind of put me into a corner that was not sustainable and not tenable. And so this morning I said, you know what? This is the time I finally got about 1,200 cards listed in my existing inventory system. It's time to delete uh, everything else. And so I went from having about 10,000 listings down to having about 5,000 listings. And so there's about 3,800, uh, mostly books, video games, DVDs, media, stuff like that. About 1,200 sports cards in my existing sports cards inventory system. And then everything else was just cards that were put in uh, like either loose stacks or in these 5,000 count I think it's BCW is the brand, cardboard containers. And I got that idea from Burbank Cards. They're a, a huge multi-million dollar card company who sells singles on eBay. Um, and maybe that works for them. Maybe it works for you. Uh, I, you know, I'm sure if you have employees, you can pay you know, 15 bucks an hour. You can really stretch the margins on a lot of those low value cards. But I think for me going forward, the best use of my time selling cards and it's you know not like my main my main part of my business it's just a hobby that kind of evolved into an income stream um, is to focus on football basically because I know that pretty well the players and then only certain kinds of players and I wish I had a list because there's not really a list it's kind of depending on what time of year it is um, you know who, who who's the team signed recently there's a lot of uh, like details like that that I'm not gonna get into on this channel I'm probably gonna make a similar video after I film this to go on my sports card channel um, but it's a much more contact heavy business. And if it's a contact heavy business, meaning contact is like, I look at the cards, uh, I'm still taking photos of the cards. Maybe I'll get a scanner soon, but for the time being, it's just pictures and me listing them. I don't think I have the volume to do uh, like a pro card scanner. What's it called? It's called like pro card seller. I don't know. It's some uh, website that uses uh, Google OCR to get the um, the name and the the brand and series and if it's a, a numbered card off of the card and then creates a listing template and a price template for you. I don't think I'm ever gonna hit that point because I don't really want to go doing a large bulk business where I have employees or whatever. Um, I think I'm just gonna stick to listing cards the players that I know have a really high likelihood of selling in the next hopefully 90 days uh, going about it that way and then using my existing uh, inventory system where there's batch processing based on box SKUs and maybe integrate that into my overall larger inventory system. So maybe like card box 24 will be in inventory box 58 and that's how it's organized. I definitely foresee a point in the future where my card box system becomes overwhelming and I have a thousand card boxes and even though I don't lose cards once they're in the boxes, it's difficult to keep track of a thousand of anything. And so that's on the horizon what I'm thinking about, but a way to avoid that is just not sell a bunch of low value cards for 25 cents after shipping and after fees and everything, and focus more on the cards where I'm gonna get at least a buck 50 or two bucks out of them. And that still seems pretty low, but the difference in cards that routinely sell for a buck 75 versus cards that sell for $3, uh, if I had to guess, I'd say it's like probably 15 or 10% or of all the cards that sell on eBay overall are above that price and the vast majority are low cards where the buyer or the seller makes less than a dollar profit off of them which is just not like i said if you could, if you have employees if you can stretch the margins by all means or if you really love doing this and you've got a hundred thousand cards maybe you can make a hundred bucks a day doing that as well uh, but just for me for my business understanding my strengths and what i want to pursue not in the cards <laughs> no fun intended um but I'm excited about this. It gives me a chance to go through all my old inventory, take out the cards that I don't want to sell individually and lot them up and sell them and get some you know, relatively minor cash flow that way. But more importantly, free up space. Right now there's about probably 25 square feet in the back of the warehouse that are just, they're just completely reserved because I've got cards on them. And it's not even my cards that are selling often. Like this morning I, ship, I have to ship out 20, 22 cards and only two of them were non inventoried so what I mean by that is out of the 22 cards that I have to ship out today 20 of them are gonna be really easy to find uh, and there are cars that I've listed in the past month or two probably 
more soon than that, but I don't actually have the dates in front of me to tell you that accurately. And the other ones are just cards I'm gonna have to go back and, and, and rifle through them all and probably spend five minutes to make two bucks, which is just like, that's a bad, that's a bad way to do this. Uh, so yeah, I've been talking about it forever, about when I'm gonna delete these listings, when I'm gonna implement these larger inventory changes. And uh, Monday, May 8th, we're here, we did it. So thanks for watching, just, you know, more updates like this as time goes on. If you like this stuff, make sure to subscribe. And if you are too thinking about big inventory changes, let me know what you're going from to going to in the comments below because I'm always looking for tips.